Hello and welcome to MISD Assessment's video-based training on test security for 2017. This video is presented by the Mansfield ISD Department of Research, Assessment, and Accountability and is designed for campus testing coordinators, also known as CTCs, in the Mansfield ISD by which they can initiate their state-mandated training for the 2017 calendar year. This video will last approximately 15 minutes and will cover the items listed on screen. Regarding changes for 2017, we will address adjustments in test administration. However, proposed changes to passing standards will be discussed at a later time after those changes are finalized. The most prominent assessment coordinated by TEA in 2017, as in the previous five years, will be the State of Texas Assessments of Academic Readiness, better known as STAR. STAR is streamlined this year and will be available in paper and online formats. Additionally, TEA will oversee the administration of the TELPOS, STAR Alternate 2, and tax tests statewide. However, this video will spend a minimal amount of time addressing topics related to those assessments. It's also worth noting here that, as in 2016, Pearson will manage the delivery of TELPOS, STAR Alternate 2, and TAX, while the delivery of STAR will be managed by Educational Testing Service. TEA has assured districts that the issues experienced with ETS last year should be alleviated this year. As for changes to be expected in 2017, the most extensive is the reduction in the number of items on STAR grades 3 through 8, as mandated by House Bill 743, adopted during the 84th Texas Legislature in 2015. In line with those adjustments, TEA has also removed the short answer reading questions from all STAR EOC English tests. For details specific to grade or subject, refer to the revised STAR blueprints available on the TEA website. Keep in mind that House Bill 743 mandated that the length of the tests be adjusted so that on average students could finish in a specific amount of time based on grade level, which is why campuses recorded time to test data in 2016. Despite the reduction in test items, the time allowed for testing has not changed at any grade level. Additionally, 2017 will see the retirement of separate STAR A and STAR L test versions. The accommodations embedded in those online tests will still be available, but there will not be a separate test version with its own lengthy and sometimes confusing eligibility process. Lastly, TEA has made minor adjustments to accommodations that are expected to allow campuses more flexibility to offer students the support they need on STAR. Details on the changes to accommodations will be discussed in our video on test accommodations. Well, the primary reference for test security and procedures remains the District and Campus Coordinator Manual, the 2017 edition of whose cover pages you see here. It includes general security procedures along with details on STAR, STAR Alternate 2, and TELPOS. The DCCM is available electronically at the URL listed on the bottom of the screen, and hard copies were delivered to campuses in January. Regarding test security, it's always useful to recall the fundamental concerns and core areas surrounding it. TEA requires security of test materials for the same basic reason a teacher protects his or her own testing content, to protect the integrity of the system and process. Additionally, TEA requires school officials to maintain protocols of confidentiality, both of test content and student results, to maintain their validity. It's no different from a teacher seeking to prevent cheating, because students who have access to test content or answers are not truly assessed on their academic learning, and the process is thereby undermined. Students also have a right to privacy regarding their academic performance. This is why student data, in addition to test materials and content, must be handled with security protocols in place. Before we address test security as it pertains to STAR, it's important to address additional security measures instituted by TEA with respect to TELPOS. Because TELPOS requires teachers to assign objective ratings as they assess the English proficiency of ELL students, teachers must complete calibration activities to demonstrate their own competency with the state's English language proficiency standards and their corresponding TELPOS performance level descriptors. So to maintain the integrity of that system, TEA offers requirements regarding TELPOS teacher calibration, including independent completion of training and calibration and confidentiality of teacher performance. 
As in 2016, campus administrators are responsible for monitoring calibration activities to ensure their security, as well as protecting teacher results. Moving on to security issues pertaining more closely to STAR testing, campuses must implement procedures prior to testing to ensure proper test security. Each campus should maintain a specific secure area with access limited only to a few individuals for the storage of test materials. Anything accessible with a master key or multiple room keys is insufficient. The secure storage area must be available only to a handful of individuals. When materials arrive prior to a given test administration, CTC should verify the shipment is complete and ensure that all secure materials are stored and moved appropriately. Campuses should also confirm that all documentation regarding individual student accommodations and supports is current and accurate. Campuses must also address their own logistics for testing, including preparing required documentation, ensuring each space used for testing is appropriately configured to minimize student distractions and eliminate unfair advantages, and planning for emergency situations, such as fire alarms and or power outages. Most importantly, teachers and staff must be trained each calendar year on their own responsibilities related to handling of test materials and administration of testing. And each staff member who may be involved in testing must sign an oath of test security and confidentiality, acknowledging he or she understands and accepts responsibility for his or her role. Although campuses are required to offer training on testing procedures in a face-to-face -face setting, TEA offers free training resources online at the URL noted at the top of this frame. These resources are designed to supplement campus training. TEA's training is separated into three modules that, while unspectacular, are complete and comprehensive. These resources are especially useful if a staff member is absent from campus training or if he or she could benefit from additional reinforcement of the topics presented. This frame shows portions of the 2017 Oath of Test Security and Confidentiality for Test Administrators. Teachers and staff are required to initial each statement and sign the document to acknowledge their responsibilities. Any test administrator who will be authorized to view secure materials because of student accommodations is also required to sign the area indicating he or she will not divulge or copy test content. Campuses should obtain an oath for every staff member who may be involved in testing. The oath is valid for all testing in 2017. Campuses should keep a copy of every oath with their state assessment documentation files for five years. Additional documentation related to test security includes materials control forms and seating charts, as shown on this frame. The materials control form is designed to track movement of secure materials to and from the secure storage area. When a test administrator accepts materials for a testing location, he or she assumes responsibility for each book and answer document. Notice that STAR Alternate 2 includes a different materials control form. This is because STAR Alt 2 procedures allow teachers to examine materials prior to testing for the purpose of determining student accommodations. The materials control form for STAR Alternate 2 therefore requires the CTC to verify the return of materials each day they're checked out. Test administration seating charts are required for every room in which students test, whether on paper or online. Every seating chart should include the name of every test administrator who monitored the room, as well as the start and stop time for the room. This particular form includes student information on the grid itself, but a campus can choose to use roster lists with simpler charts. All of these documents should be kept in campus state assessment files for five years. While students are actually testing, the adult serving as test administrator bears several responsibilities, including distributing materials properly, completing required documentation, and confirming that student data on answer documents is complete. Most importantly, every test administrator is responsible for actively monitoring the activity in the room, ensuring that students are staying on task, working independently, and marking answers on the answer document. And yes, watching students take a test is boring at all grade levels. But active monitoring is the best preventive measure for a variety of potential problems, from issues like student cheating to unintentional activities, like a student who cannot stay focused and needs simple reminders. There is a clear inverse relationship between active monitoring and testing incidents. As mentioned previously, although test content has been reduced on most STAR tests in 2017, time allowed for testing has not. 
Students are still allotted four hours for all STAR tests, the only exceptions being English 1 and English 2 EOC, which allow five hours for testing. Students may finish in less time, particularly in earlier grades, but every student is still allowed up to four hours to complete STAR. Test administrators should periodically inform students of time remaining and should record the clock time for the beginning and end of testing on the seating chart. Remember, timing does not stop for student-initiated breaks. It only stops if an event affects all students or if a student requires medical attention. Lastly, and for some of you, sadly, TEA will collect time to test data again in 2017 for some students in grades 3 through 8. Details on these procedures will be addressed in STAR 3 through 8 procedures training later in February. As for TEA's rules concerning the confidentiality of test content, it is imperative for campus staff to understand that test content is intended for students' eyes only, and answers are to be completed by students only. Furthermore, students are required to avoid discussing test content or taking notes over the content they see on the STAR. And certainly, no teacher should ever look inside a test book or even ask students what they ask on STAR. Having said that, TEA does sometimes allow photocopying or viewing of test content, and the Test Administrator Oath has a separate section for test administrators who read the test to students to attest that they will not reveal or discuss items on the test. Because all STAR tests will be available in both paper and online formats in 2017, each format has a unique set of concerns that impact test security. For paper testing, campuses must account for every student, accurately code answer documents, destroy certain papers, and ensure that it accounts for and returns every test book that was delivered. For online testing, campuses must also ensure that the ETS Secure Browser is installed and used on every computer on which a student tests. They must also manage student test tickets containing access codes to test content, address technical issues, and destroy certain papers as well. Also, remember that TEA requires seating charts for rooms in which online testing occurs, not just paper testing. This frame shows the items to keep on file after a test administration. TEA has not changed any requirements here for 2017. The list remains the same and the time frame remains five years. As in years past, MISD assessment will provide a form by which each campus must document its test security procedures. Our office will ask for only one test security documentation form for calendar year 2017, unless any procedures change from a primary administration to a retest administration. Ideally, none of us will have to worry about this frame because everyone will follow procedures properly and no incidents that may be irregularities will occur. But it's not a perfect world, so we need to understand what to do if imperfection rears its ugly head. First, remember that serious irregularities involve an intentional breach of test security principles. These should never occur, but sometimes people do make bad choices. Most irregularities are procedural in nature, involving an unintentional mistake in one of the areas listed. Our expectation is that each campus provides thorough training and support to staff so that everyone knows what they must, should, can, and cannot do. If problems occur, it is not the end of the world, but it is also not an issue that can be summarily dismissed. Your first step is always to contact our office as soon as you know there's a problem. We will then proceed as necessary. If a campus incident is indeed a testing irregularity and reported to TEA, our expectation, like TEA's, is that the campus takes steps to resolve it in the present and prevent it in the future. Because TEA takes test security seriously, they include a wealth of resources at the URL indicated at the top of this frame to help districts and campuses to that end. TEA will soon release the 2017 Test Security Supplement, which presents additional guidance and recommendations, and the agency also offers lots of samples, hints, and supports to assist in smooth, error-free test administration. As always, the job of MISD Assessment is also to provide guidance and support to you, so feel free to contact us if you have questions. We also encourage you to make use of our own informational resources on the web, including our website and YouTube channel, or you can follow us on Twitter at MISD Assessment. 
we'll do our best to provide the most up-to-date information regarding star testing. Thanks for watching.